When starting watercolors, did you ever wonder how you were going to get white in your painting when you have no white paint? She knows me in and out, love of a different kind, but we still have no control. Cause when the Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Elisa, the artist behind Elisa Laporte Art. Today we are going to talk about using whites or leaving whites in our paintings. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified when I post new videos of watercolor techniques. In watercolors, we do not paint with white. It is often the white of our paper. Have you ever observed something that is white, like the snow in the mountains, clouds, or even fur on an animal? If you have observed these and looked at them closely, you will notice that they are not fully white. They have other colors and hues inside of them whether that be yellows, blues, purples, or whatever is reflecting around them. But to start off our whites in watercolor, we need to have that white surface and we need to leave it white. So how do we do that? In today's video, you're going to paint with me the techniques we learned in our last tutorial on how to leave our whites. So today you will create this painting. I hope you enjoy and learn something new. Today we will create a painting leaving our whites. We'll start out by drawing our sketch. Our sketch is finished and I will leave a link in the description below. We'll tape our painting down. After you've finished your sketch, you want to think about where you want your whites before you start painting. This is important because you can't go back and put whites over top of them. So we need to decide where we want our whites. This is a waterfall. This area right here is where I want the most bright whites. It's going to be where the water is falling. So I will use my masking fluid in this area to make sure that I get the spray and the nice white there. In this area here, I will go over some areas that I want white but not a smooth white with my wax crayon. In this area where we have the mist from our waterfall, we are going to lift out some of the color after we've painted it and there's going to be areas in the waterfall after we've taken off our masking fluid that we're going to use direct painting and paint around some of the areas that we don't want white let us start with our masking fluid. I'm going to start with my brush. Get some on there. And this is a rock here. And I want to make sure that I don't accidentally paint into this area. I want this to be white. I'm also painting down here because this area, though we will scrub out some of the paint, I do want to lay in a color there first. And I want a nice crisp edge where I have that waterfall because it is very crisp looking. If you look at waterfalls on the edges by the rocks, you have that really dark color by the rock. Uh, you have that really dark color of the rock. And then you're going to have the really white spray from the water falling. Some other areas I want to get are on this side of our waterfall. This is where the water, you're going to still see it, that green-blue color here. And it's falling over the edge and going white. So I want to make sure that I don't go into this area at all. So you see I haven't gone in here. I've laid down this edge here, which will allow me to not go into that. And I see where that barrier is. And all of this area will stay white. Clean off my brush. Right here... We have an area of white, but it's not going to be a smooth white like in the waterfall here. It will appear a little bit like a dry brush. So we're just going to leave a little bit here and a few areas where we might think the water is flowing a little faster and has that white appearance. If you remember what the white wax did from our previous video, we were able to draw it on, and then when we painted over it, it left it out. Uh, I will leave a link in the card above. And you won't see this part until after we've already painted over top of it. 
The other thing I want to do is take my dip pen and actually create a few dots along the edge of our waterfall here for some spray. And I want these ones to be pretty white. Maybe a few dots in here. Maybe a few in here so I don't lose some of this white in the edges of this waterfall. If you feel like they're too small and you're going to miss it, then just use your masking fluid to go over it. Don't forget to clean off your dip pen so you don't get any of the masking fluid drying and caking to your brush or to your dip pen. You don't want to gum it all up. And it allows us time to let the masking fluid dry. Looks like it's almost dry. Okay, nice and clean. Okay, so we have our masking fluid on and our wax. And the other techniques to leave whites um, come after we start painting. We're going to start our first wash painting up here while we're still allowing the rest of our masking fluid to dry. I want this to be a very cool color, a yellow gray. Almost like it's kind of raining. I'm going to mix together cobalt blue with burnt sienna, create a nice gray. And then I'm going to add some yellow ochre to it. That's this color here. Maybe a little more yellow. And we're going to do a flat wash just across the top here. It's okay if we go into our horizon line where the trees are. When it dries, we'll go over top of that and cover it up. We're using our flat wash. Remember to load your brush and to touch that bead. Now I'm going to go and rinse my brush off and pull down with just some clean water. Since this side is dry, I'm going to go with my greens and blues and create our first wash here. This will be a mingled or variegated wash. I'm going to use a Viridian or Hooker's Green with just a touch of sap green in it. Hooker or Viridian Green and our sap green. Mix that up and then we're going to use some ultramarine blue. Okay, we always want to start top to bottom or light to dark. This area is going to be lighter because it's where the, the falls are falling over the side of our cliff. So I'm going to just lightly Start at the edge of this waterfall here. Now I notice there's a little bit of yellow in there, so I'm going to add just a touch of our light yellow. Remember, we're creating our mingled or variegated wash. You're starting to see where I left behind the crayon. I want to lighten this up, so I'm going to take some clean water and just pull it out. And then I'm going to go into our blue. It might seem too bright at first, but we will darken it up. And just cover the rest of that area. I'm going to add more blue here before it falls over the rocks. So you're going to see some rocks here, and then you're going to see just the water as it's falling over. That's the effect we want. As you can see, as we've been painting our waterfall over here, our sky is almost dry. So while we're waiting for that to dry some more, we can clean off our palette and start mixing our darks for this area behind the waterfall and for this rock here by the waterfall. Just take a paper towel and clean out your palette. So for this side of the waterfall, I wanted a very dark gray-blue color. If you remember, I did a video on different browns, different brands, and when comparing the browns, if we added blue to them, we were able to make different grays. I will link that in the card above. And we want a really dark blue-gray, so I'm going to use burnt umber and ultramarine blue. So burnt umber. We want quite a bit because this is a large area. Rinse off our brush and go into my ultramarine blue. You see how that changed it to a nice gray 
color. It looks kind of like the rocks might be. I don't want it too blue, but when we create the mist on this side, I want to have a little bit more blue to the color when I lift it out. See, the nice black gray. Now I want the color to be darker on this end, and I will lighten it a little on this side, and I want it to be very wet because we're going to lift some out with both our paper towel and a brush to really get that mist in this side. So you want to be very careful. We're gonna start here, because this area we will darken up, but there is a lighter area here. So we're actually gonna start just under this pencil mark here. It's important to bounce around your page as it's drying. It's always better to let it air dry than to blow dry it. Load your brush. I'm gonna start on this end. Doesn't need to be straight because you have it's rocks over there. So it's okay if it's crooked. You want it to be really dark on this end. I left a bead here so that I can pull that down later, but I want to quickly go in this side where it's gonna be we want it to stay almost black. This area I want almost black here. Then I'm going to rinse my brush and pull the rest of that paint over. It's okay if you touch this rock over here, we're gonna cover it with more black. You see how it's already starting that mist effect? Then what we're going to do is take clean water and start pushing some of this paint away to create some mist. I like to twist my brush so it doesn't it's not too straight of an edge, especially for this mist. You can also splatter a little bit of water in there, which will make blossoms. This is okay, just pick it up. It's okay if some of that color comes up there. It'll look like the mist coming up above those rocks. Now we're going to use our paper towel and just touch some areas. Soften this edge here because we will have mist all the way up here. We don't want too hard of a line, but we want to still see those rocks there. And touch very gently to see how dry it is. You don't want to have it bleeding up into our sky. It feels dry enough. I'm going to start with our trees. Some of them higher than others. And see how that was wet there? That's just going to bleed and pull down. That's going to be beautiful and it'll create that mist, which is what we want. We don't want this too dark of a gray. It has kind of lightened up, which is fine because it is in the background with the mist. I'm gonna pull that down into those rocks and just on the edge of this water. So be very careful of that edge. This is why we added masking fluid to some of those areas. So we are going into our direct painting there and we're gonna pull down the rest of this and lighten it by going into fresh water. Make sure my trees aren't too same same. Need some variety. And have some tree holes if you want. We're going to move to a smaller brush. We are going to direct paint the top of our waterfall. Again, we want our dark brown, just like we had last time, but I am going to use a smaller brush. This is a size four, you can use a size six. You do want it to be smaller because we're going to get some details in here and into our ultramarine blue. We don't want this quite as gray as we did our mist here. We still want it pretty gray because we can. This is closer to us, so we're going to see more of the brown of the rock. We're going to have some flow of water here, so we want to make sure we don't touch everything. Here we're doing direct painting. We're just going to randomly space your black color and leave some white. Start off back here. You'll have more of the rock color and then you're going to have less and less rock color as you get closer to the waterfall. Here the waterfall is falling off so we're going to see a little bit of that rock under there and then we want to leave as much white as we can. We still want to see the edge of that rock so it looks like it's falling over. Just take your time. Make sure your lines are horizontal. That's how water flows, with the exception of our waterfall because it's going down. The rest of it, we want it to be 
horizontal. I'm also going to go into some fresh water and just bleed some of this brown color because then it'll look like the water is flowing and you kind of see that brown rock underneath that waterfall. Just do it underneath, not on the tops, because the tops look like rocks and then underneath looks like the water flowing over those rocks. It's nice color and it did bleed up in here. That is okay. Like I said, we will, once this is dry, go over this rock here. So that will all be covered up. Now I am going to soften the edge of this rock here, even add a little bit more brown to it maybe, and add some more details here. Maybe more trees that are a little closer. And then soften that up. Some areas might be a little darker than others, depending on that mist, so you can go over top of some. And then just soften the edges. Always on these type of ones, soften your edges. And it looks more like that mist is coming through there. And then this side is going to be darker, and then it will lighten up as it gets closer to this mist. And soften up those edges. Get that misty look. I feel like it's a little too same, same. I want some more variety in there. So I'm adding a little bit more blue to my mixture to create that similar gray. And I'm gonna go into a few sections and darken it up and blend it out just to add more variety. I still want it to look like mist, but I needed more variation. You want those all to be soft edges. So go over them, make them really soft, create some more mist. Over here, soften that up. See, I got a little bit too hard of edges over here, and that's where you can go in with your brush, soften it up, your paper towel, and pick up anything you need. I'm gonna grab my flat brush. It'll be better for trying to pick up. It's more sturdy. Scrubbing out is a lot easier when you have a sturdy brush. Let's see how it's picking some of that up, and it's softening my edges. I want a little bit of mist over here where it's all black. Looks really nice. We have more of a misty feeling here from our waterfall. Here I need to darken this edge up a little more because it is against the water and I want a nice edge here. I want a nice contrast. Just touch and let it bleed into it because it's still wet over here. Okay, now while this is drying, we're going to go back into our water here. This is a really dark color. It's further back uh, in the water, but it is closer to us, and we want it to lighten up as it's going over this edge. So I'm going to take the same gray-blue mixture and just add more blue so it's a really dark blue. It's a nice thing. We're sticking with a very, very minimal palette. We have our ultramarine blue, we used a cobalt blue, we used burnt umber, a little bit of yellow ochre, and used burnt sienna and our greens so far. So fairly limited palette, no reds right now. So we have that mix made. I'll make a little bit more green because there's gonna be a few spots where we darken up the green, but I don't wanna touch the green too much. We'll go in with those first, just so it has some variation. It looks like light and shadow. I'm gonna blend those out as they connect with our blue and they will soften because this is water so we want it to look fairly soft. Now we're going to go in with our blue and do some direct painting. You can still see some of our crayons so just be careful you don't go over that too much. Soften some of that up. I want some of that darkness in here too. Where it's wet it's going to bleed into that. I want it to be almost all of that blue black color in that corner and then it's going to bleed out and get lighter as we come into this green. We have a rock here and some rocks over here. This is white in here. We have some water that's coming that's white. You can see the white crayon in there and I think I want to bleed some of this blue here as well as just a touch in here. I really like that. Green. With the green you can actually pull some more into that blue. I like the varying shades of my green and blue. It feels very much like water. This is very light here. And some more of that yellow to it. I think it's too blue here, so I'm gonna just swipe it up and add more of our green. Just to see how dry it is. Our sky is completely dry. 
It's dry right here, so we're going to make this rock here. Go into our burnt umber and our ultramarine blue. We want a lot of pigment on this one. Again, using our size 4 brush, we're going to direct paint where the edge of our clip is. And because we put that masking fluid right here, we're not going to worry too much about what's happening with our waterfall on this side. We're going to go in our clip up here. Make sure it's horizontal across some trees. And it's going to kind of blend into this area here. I'm not going to cover all of it. I do like some of those highlights, maybe where there's some light hitting, some reflected light. I'm going to still go in and fix a few of these spots here. This mist, you play with it a little bit, not too, too much, but I want to make sure it looks like the mist is going up. It doesn't look too funky in some spots where we where we used our brush to wipe it out. If you need to touch up a few edges, you can. Make it look a little more misty. I want this area to be a little darker here. So you've got to be very quick with those if you put them in. And you can leave hard edges. I like that a lot better. I also think I want to create some clouds up here. And we are going to brush them out because our clouds are going to be lighter in some areas. Some areas you can make them darker. I want to make a few lighter, maybe right here. Always use clean water and a clean brush and a clean paper towel. And then there's going to be a few areas I want to go a little bit darker with my clouds. A lot of painting like this, it's just a lot of back and forth, softening your edges, adding your paint. You have to be fairly quick and you can only work in a small area at a time. If you work in too large of an area, you're going to lose the effects that you want. So you need to be careful. Just adding more depth to our waterfall. The same as what we did with our trees. Just layering that waterfall so you can see the depth of it. And we don't have it completely white. Our whitest area is actually right here where we have our darkest darks. So your eye is going to go directly to this area and then it will follow these lines down here and come back up with the mist. So you kind of create a circle here to keep your eyes within the painting. I'm going to add just a touch more green to some of these and soften it up so it's there but it's not quite so green. But I do want to add that color in there. If you have a color somewhere in your painting, you do want to repeat it somewhere else. You don't want it to be the only color in there. You always want to repeat your colors. So we have some of that blue gray here as well as here and then more of a brown gray here that goes all along here and a lighter tone of it here. And then we have our green here and in the waterfall. So you just want to make sure you're repeating your colors. It just needs to be there at least two or three times. You don't have to do a lot. So even if you have just where we have this green, where we have this large green shape here, I just have subtle tones in the waterfall of that green and that helps balance it out. You could, if you wanted, add just a touch of that green into your trees here. Not so much that you're going to see green, but it'll have more of a green-gray tone, which will also help balance it out. And for the very last, we are going to sign our name. We have used our four different methods, using our masking fluid, using our wax, lifting out, and in this area we did the direct method of directly painting it on and going around some shapes that we wanted to leave white. I'm actually going to use a green yellow for my signature over here because I think it'll stand out better. I'm going to make sure your name stands out. All right. Now that will fade a little bit, but it'll still be there after it dries. Now that our painting is dry, we can take off our tape, which can be the most satisfying part seeing those crisp white edges after you've finished your painting. That wraps up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed painting with me. Our question of the day, what sparked your interest in watercolors? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video. And until next time, keep on painting!